Good morning, everyone. I am so happy that you could join me again. Well, I have a big household project that I want to accomplish this week, and I plan to pay myself rather handsomely for the job. I'm not talking about mere cash here. Instead, my reward will be edible. I am making a strawberry glazed peach galette that I will serve with homemade vanilla ice cream. You might like to reward yourself with these same sweet treats the next time you have to perform some tasks that you are not looking forward to doing. For the peach galette, I'm actually going to use nectarines. After all, a nectarine is simply a peach without the fuzzy skin. And my nectarines are ripe, but they're not overly ripe. The first thing I need is a French pastry dough, which is very easy to make in a food processor. So what I have here is 200 grams of all-purpose flour. That's about one and a half cups of very carefully measured flour. Always better off to weigh your flour. And to the flour, I am adding one tablespoon of regular granulated sugar and a half teaspoon of salt. Pulse a few times just to blend the dry ingredients. Then add eight tablespoons or 113 grams of cold, diced, unsalted butter. Pulse again just to break up the butter. With the machine running, I'm going to add just enough ice water until a dough starts to come together. That's about one third cup of water or 78 mils. This is what we are looking for, a nice crumbly dough. When you pinch it, it holds its shape. Form the dough into a ball. Flatten it into a disc. Wrap the dough in cling film. And then pop it into the refrigerator for about one hour or into the freezer for about 30 minutes. All right, my dough is nicely chilled. Going to roll it out. I'm using my pastry cloth here. It's giving it a light dusting of flour. Then you rub the flour into the cloth, mash it a few times with a rolling pin. And to help avoid cracking at the edge of the dough, I run the rolling pin all around the edge. I'm going to roll this into about a 12 inch diameter circle. I can link this pastry cloth in the description below if you are interested. I can link this rolling pin too. I have a 12 inch diameter circle. Transfer the dough to a parchment lined cookie sheet. I'm going to put this in the refrigerator while we make the filling. Yeah, it's important to keep the pastry dough cold. To flavor the fruit and to thicken its juices, I simply take a medium bowl, add a quarter cup of regular granulated sugar, that's 50 grams of sugar, a generous tablespoon of cornstarch, a half teaspoon of ground cinnamon, and because it offers a wonderful floral perfume, a half teaspoon of cardamom. Whisk, then cut four peaches or nectarines into half inch wedges. Add the fruit to the scented sugar mixture. 
give it a toss. I was going to add a teaspoon of pure vanilla extract, but honestly, this smells so wonderful right now, I don't think it needs any vanilla. So I'm going to let the fruit macerate or exude its juices for about 10 minutes. Meanwhile, preheat the oven to 425 degrees Fahrenheit or 220 degrees Celsius. My peaches or nectarines have exuded most of their juices. So I'm going to transfer them to this sieve because I do not want the juices in my galette. They will make the galette soggy. As a further anti-soggy galette measure, I'm going to sprinkle the pastry with about a tablespoon of cornstarch. Spread the cornstarch to within about an inch from the edge of the pastry. Cornstarch is a great thickener. Much more efficient than flour. Wipe my hands. Then, I'm going to arrange the nectarine slices in concentric circles. The peaches are arranged. I have a few left over, but I will enjoy these all on their own. Now fold the exposed border over the edge of the fruit, making little pleats as you go. Give the exposed dough a brushing of beaten egg and a dusting of demerara sugar. You could prepare the galette up to this point, just pop it into the refrigerator and then bake it off when you're ready to. I'm going to bake mine off right now. It's going to take about 30 minutes or until the crust has browned and the peaches or nectarines are perfectly tender. While the galette is baking, I'm going to go ahead and make the ice cream. Now this is the easiest and best ice cream I have ever encountered. I'm going to make it right here in my Vitamix. To the blender jar, add one cup or 240 mils of whole milk, a half cup or 100 grams of granulated sugar, a quarter cup or 25 grams of non-fat dry milk powder, and one teaspoon of pure vanilla extract, and 24 ounces or 700 mils of half and half, which I froze in ice cube trays. Here we go. Now I have my tamper ready just in case I need it. And here we go. Blend at high speed until the mixture turns quite thick, about 30 seconds. Would you believe that's all there is to it? Ice cream. This is amazing. I don't think you will find better ice cream than this anywhere. I'm going to decant this into a freezer container. By the way, if you're not familiar with half and half, it is half whole milk and half heavy cream. I'm going to lick the spatula. Mm. Into the freezer. And here is our galette, all baked and beautiful. I am transferring the galette to a cooling rack. And to make the nectarine slices shimmer, 
I am brushing them with hot strawberry jam. Before we tackle our big household project, I need to take Avery for a short walk in the garden. The galette is made, the ice cream is made, the dog has been walked. So now we need to tackle a project that I have been putting off for a long time. Please follow me into the 19th century pantry. The L-shaped pantry is in a small room located between my kitchen and the servant's entrance to the dining room. The deep cabinets and drawers were probably intended for fine table linens, silver tea sets, candlesticks, and other serving pieces. One of the cabinets is equipped with lock and key. Perhaps the tea was secured there. Tea was a luxury item in the 19th century. These cabinets are actually not that bad. They contain like, various bakeware and stemware, glassware. Here's my beloved baguette pan. Here is a deviled egg serving platter, which I honestly have never used. Cloth napkins, placemats, more stemware, and so on. Now the problem with this pantry is that the shelves are 19 inches deep. It's really hard to find things. So here is a mishmash of, oops, see things fall out, slivered almonds, and various dietary things that I use for recipes like sugar-free chocolate chips and whatnot. All of these can have a home somewhere else. The worst of the lot is this cabinet and this cabinet. Again, the shelves are so deep that I can't find what's in the back. And I did look for pull-out shelves to install, but those shelves are intended for pantries that have a depth of 8 to 10 inches. Again, these are 18 and 19 inches deep. So I'm going to move all of these things elsewhere. To begin deep cleaning this 19th century pantry, I've gathered three containers. This one is labeled Charity, so I will give these things away. This one is labeled Someplace Else. And this black garbage bag is for garbage. And the first thing I'm going to tackle is the top of the pantry. As I handle each item in the pantry, I ask myself three questions. Do I want it? Do I need it? Do I have room for it? Even if I answer yes to the first two questions, if I answer no to the last one, I reevaluate. Now I am using my sharp cordless vacuum to suck up dust and debris. Then I take stock of the food items. I am giving my surplus canned goods to a food pantry. 
other items will either be tossed or relocated to my kitchen. I decide to use this 200-year-old pantry just as my Victorian ancestors did. And that is for the safe storage of cake stands, platters, and other decorative serveware. When we bought this house, I thought the pantry was built from oak wood. But on closer inspection, I have discovered the wood is pine, faux painted to resemble oak. Well, that is all I can do for today. I want my peach galette and ice cream reward. Please join me. If you hear any scraping sounds outside, it is our beloved contractor, John. He's scraping and painting the 200-year-old shutters on this house. A taste. Oh, hallelujah. I love everything about this galette. The peaches are perfectly scented with cinnamon and cardamom, and the French all-butter pastry crust is, well, it's tender and flaky, and beyond delicious. It feels so good to have that dreaded pantry project pretty much buttoned up now. In a future video, I'll show you where I put all of the food items. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day in order to spend some time with me. I really appreciate your company. So please take good care of yourself, and I will see you in next week's video. Be sure to try this galette, okay? Bye for now.